I have an idea and I'd like to show you my process of making it a reality. Let's start with the setup. The setup is actually pretty simple. We need to create a card design, front and back. Then we'll use the 3D panel plugin to make it a 3D card. From there, we can animate it to flip, revealing information on the actual alert. Everything should be fairly easy except for one part. So let's talk about the difficult part. The potential difficulty here is when we flip the card because the 3D panel plugin actually uses one single source to turn it into a panel. So the backside is usually the front side, but inverted, which means at some point in our animation, we'll have to transition into the backside so that it reveals what we want. But thankfully, the move plugin has all sorts of options to make that happen. All that being said, it's time to start. Let's create those cards. I'm gonna start with a 1080p canvas and I kinda want the background to be slightly gray, not completely dark. That's just good graphic design etiquette. From there, I want to determine the size of the card. So we're gonna add a rectangle and I think this ratio is fine. We do not want rounded corners here because our 3D panel plugin will add them automatically. So this is gonna be the back of the card. So we want some sort of pattern to show. All right, so that's the back of our card. And now let's create the front. And that'll be the front. We're gonna keep it pretty simple, All right? Now let's crop and export this. And now we can make our 3D cards in OBS Studio. All right, here we are in OBS Studio. I'm gonna create a new scene and we're gonna add our cards. Now, what are those cards? They are images, so image source. Call this one card front and go find your front. Add another image source, card back, and get the card back. Oh, that looks good actually. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna turn off the card front for now. I'm going to go to filters and I'm going to add my 3D panel filter. Again, this is from the 3D panel plugin created by Horai Chen or Horai Ken. I have a video right here dedicated to how it works, how to install it, where to find it. And I have a second video right here showing you how to create animations with it. All right, so let's add 3D panel filter to our back card. There we go. And this is the result that we get. We can, we can do a whole bunch of stuff with it, but there it is. This is what we're interested in. Let's pick an initial position like right now and kind of visualize what it's going to look like once it's revealed. For example, this looks good tilted back, but once it's revealed, it's going to be tilted down. We don't want that. But to be fair, we can rotate multiple things at once. I'm just going to make sure the thickness is fairly small and we can actually start animating it. So for this one, I'm going to use the Move plugin. Again, that's a plugin. You got to type Move plugin OBS Studio, download, install it, and then you'll have a bunch of filters with the word Move in front of them. What we're going to use here is actually the Move value because it gives us access to, well, all the values of that filter. And I should have named this something like initial position. Under filter, we're going to pick our 3D panel. Move value type, we want all the settings. Now, it is already by default, but we're going to click Get Values just to make sure. And basically, the current 3D values are locked in. So we scroll down, custom duration. Let's make it take a second if we want it to go back here. And uh, that should be it for now. So basically, our animation will start that way. Now I'm going to duplicate that move value, call it final position, go back to my 3D panel and basically set it to that position that I want. Now I can play with the tilt, maybe flip it even more. Yeah, something like that. Now we need to lock it in. We need to record those values. So we're going to go back to final position and click get values. And uh, congratulations, you animated a card flip. If I turn on initial position, boom. If I turn on final position, Boom. What we need to work on is the front where the information is supposed to show. All right, so this is the front card. And what we want is two things, the user profile picture and also the user name. So the profile picture will be a browser source. Add browser source, card profile pic. We want it to be pretty small. We want 350 by 350. We want it to be a square because that's the format on Twitch. Yeah, something like that is pretty fine. We'll center it. And then we need some text. So I'll add a text source, call it card username, and we'll put a placeholder name for now, which we can, of course, customize, make look cool, comic sense. Ooh, fancy. Now, something we're gonna do quickly is press Control E on that text because we want to basically lock it to that size. So I'm going to go positional alignment, keep it center, and bounding box type, maximum size only. 
From there, I can scale the size that I want. And you'll see that, yeah, if the name is too big, it'll basically size down. And that's something that we can test right now by typing a bunch of nonsense. And there you go, it's secure. You might wanna play with the placement just a little bit. And what I'm gonna do to the profile picture, instead of just leaving, you know, a square, I'm gonna add an advanced mask filter. That's from a plugin called Advanced Mask. And we're gonna give it a good old polygon, play with the radius. Nice, I can't, I can't, like I so can't see. <laughs> And then rotation, there you go. To be fair, this is just an exercise. I don't think you should be doing this, but hopefully it gives you ideas for other cool stuff. Nice. Now for cards like bids or raids, of course you would leave some text for this person raided with this amount of viewers or this person tipped this amount of money. What we're going to do is group all of this together, including the front card. And that's what we're going to add the 3D panel filter to. So the card username, the profile picture, and the front right click group selected items and call it card front group. We're not going to manually add that 3D panel filter. <laughs> we're going to go to the back card. We're going to right click. We're going to click copy filters. So it will copy the 3D panel and our two move value filters. Then we're going to right click on our group and paste filters. Turn off the back card. And as you can see, everything is perfect ish, except it's showing the back. Our rotation is different. So what we need to do now is basically flip the card so that the final position is basically flipped. So it's showing the actual <laughs> information. And what we want to do now is basically look at the values closely. Editor get a level here with a quick message. I'm actually going to skip a lot of this part where it's basically me figuring out the math on reversing the card. All you have to know is when it comes to the X axis, you just have to go from a positive value to a negative value. So if it's minus 20, then you go plus 20. And then for the Y axis, you need to add 360 to have the perfect inverted position for the initial position. But then for the final position, I eyeballed it. So I had to eyeball it again. All right, now let's get to the actual difficult part, synchronization. How do we not only make them play the animation at the same time, since it's two different sources, but on top of that, at the right time, make that front part of the card visible. And uh, we don't need those to be superimposed. We can actually have a look at both of them at the same time. And what we're gonna use in order to trigger all of that is a specific filter from also the Move plugin. And we can add it to the card front group or to the card back, it doesn't really matter. We'll add it to the card back, select it, go to filters, I put this here, add a new filter. And this one is Move Action. And we'll call this first one Trigger. Under Action, we're gonna go with Filter Enable. And it allows us to trigger any filter from any source in any scene. So let's select the source, card back, that's the one we're on right now. And the filter is final position. So when this triggers, it'll flip. So far, so good. We're going to duplicate it so that we can trigger the front. So we'll call this one trigger front. And this time the source is card front group. And the filter is also final position. Now from there, if you want, you can have the whole, you know, timing thing, trigger it this and then wait and then trigger that. Or you can also set it up directly in your initial and final position for both cards. For example, in the back of the card, if I go to my final position here, I can set an end delay. Basically, you know, how long do you want the card to display for? I'll set it to three seconds. And then I can say the next move, go back to initial position, okay? I can do the same thing for my front. So final position, wait 3000 milliseconds, then go back to your initial position. All right. OK, let's go back to the triggers. But right now we have an automatic animation as long as we trigger final position first. And we have two triggers, this one for the back and this one for the front. All we need to do now is tell it, hey, when you trigger the back, scroll down simultaneously. Also trigger the front. Now we're going to have to do it twice so it actually resets. But if I click now. Three seconds and boom. All right, now if I trigger this, we realize that we have a mistake. That means I need to correct the value in one of those cards. Let's test our trigger. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, look at that, beautiful. And we can see that they overlay perfectly. All right, the good news is, since they're gonna be on top of each other, all we need to do is trigger the visibility 
for the front card or the top card at the right time. The other question here is how do we trigger the visibility at an interval while the values are already moving? Well, we're going to add another move action and this one will be front viz and the action will be source visibility. I'm like praying for this to, to work. <laughs> the scene is card scene and the source is card front group. The action is enable, enable. Yup. The custom duration is we have no idea. <laughs> Let's imagine that it's split in the middle, then it would be 500 millisecond because our card moves in one second. Custom duration, what does that mean? Does it trigger and then it sets a timer? I want a delay. Hey, there's one way to find out, right? I'm going to set my trigger front to set off my front visibility simultaneously. Oh, wait. Or should I set the delay here to then do the visibility? I'll play around with it and then I'll tell you. I'll put 500 milliseconds here and then turn this off and test it. No, it seems to trigger automatically like, oh, is it because it's simultaneous with trigger front? Yes, it is. Um, next move should be front viz. I think I got it. Oh, I got it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I got it. I got it. So trigger front is where you put the delay and then you tell it next move should be the visibility. So first trigger triggers the second one and then second one awaits its custom duration to turn on the visibility. That's kind of cool. Now I'm sure there's a way to actually make it go reverse at the right time, but I'm just going to duplicate my visibility, call it front in viz. And then this time we're going to set it to disable. I'm going to go back to front viz. This time we need the time that it's going to stay, which was 3000 milliseconds plus 500 until it gets to that rotation. And then the next move can be front in viz. I hope I got that right. So let's trigger it once. A little, a little too soon. Let's test it again. Ooh. Yeah. Let's go 4,500. Let's go 4,000. I think we got it. I, I think we got it. This is so cool. Anyways, um, let's merge them. Let's merge them and see what it looks like. All right. First time actually seeing it. <laughs> Dang. Okay, there's two steps to finally wrap it up. First of all is the animation in and animation out. You're not going to have a card just waiting on screen the whole time, right? So we want this to be invisible when it's all said and done. So on the initial position, since we know it's going to be invisible. I need to go and find visibility options. Oh no, we don't have visibility options because it's not the move source filter. It's the move value filter. Okay, okay, okay. Um, how do we get away with that? So start trigger for the trigger filter here. Should be when it's visible. Activate when this filter becomes actively shown in the final mix. I don't know if that's what I'm looking for. Let me try turning it off and on. Oh, it is what I'm looking for. <laughs> That's exactly it. OK, so now we have a way of triggering the whole thing, and that's by just turning this on. I wish I could turn it off automatically with the um, final position, but technically that doesn't work. So what we're going to do is duplicate front in viz and we're going to turn it into back in viz. Let's make sure you select the right one card back. And yeah, we want it to happen sometime after the front got invisible. So on front in viz, we're going to set it as the next move. Okay, and then we can adjust the custom delay if we have to. Okay, so if I turn this off and I turn it back on, I have my animation and it turns off. Oh, so good. So good. All right, cool, 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 cool. I'm going to right click on that back card and I'm going to play with the show transition and the back transition. Of course, we could just fade, but I'm going to go with Luma wipe and we'll find something. OK, we can do fractal, except we want it to be pretty fast because everything will be moving pretty fast. Go show transition, probably like 100 milliseconds and hide transition. We'll do the same Luma wipe, maybe test another one for the hide. Nah, fractal is where it's at. And the duration for that is going to be 100 milliseconds. So now.
Maybe a little fast. <laughs> Maybe a little fast, especially for the hide transition. Let's go 250 on the show. Let's go a whole second on the hide. Because the hide, I think it's going to delay it. Whereas the first one is... Okay. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> it takes a little bit of time to accelerate, so we can probably slow the show transition even more. Let's go 500 milliseconds. Okay, now finally we can take care of the username and the profile picture. So we're gonna open up StreamerBot. And what we're gonna do is very, very simple. We're gonna tell StreamerBot to get that information, to replace it, and then show our card. And that's it. So let's get to our actions. Let's add a new action. Under sub actions, let's do right click, Twitch. I think we need to get user information. Get user info for target. It gives us the example, so we'll do user. Percentage, user, percentage. And now we can do OBS Studio, sources, set browser source URL, and it gives us the exact example too. Just pick the scene, pick the source, and we can see it's target, user, profile, image, URL, and between percentages. So now it gets the info, changes the profile picture or the browser source. What do we have? The text, OBS Studio, source, set GDI text, the right scene, the text, and it gives us the example. Target user right there. Click OK. Now I can add a little delay because sometimes the browser source takes a little bit of time before it uh, before it actually changes. So we'll go to core delay and let's add uh, 250 milliseconds. Hopefully that's enough, but you can adjust it. And finally, in OBS, we want to trigger just a filter, right? So sources set source filter state. From there, you can pick whatever trigger you want inside of Streamerbot to, to trigger this whole thing, right? In this case, it would be a follow alert. So you would want it to be add Twitch uh, and find wherever they have follow alerts channel, follow, boom, and that's it. It would be done. But for the sake of testing this, I'm going to set it to a command. That's core command, command triggered, create command, call it card test. And the command is exclamation mark card, click OK. And I think we should be done. Let me pull up my Twitch chat. <laughs> also, that font, terrible. <laughs> oh, I put I, I, I did the wrong thing. <laughs> I did the wrong thing. We don't want the trigger filter to trigger the whole thing. That's not what triggers it. What triggers the whole thing is the visibility of card back. I forgot about that. That's what triggers everything. So no, it's not OBS source filter state. You can delete that. It is. OBS source set source visibility state in our card scene card back make it visible there you go okay now if I type exclamation mark card it takes a while but at least like the profile picture is gonna be in there and of course the the advantage of doing all of this in OBS Studio is that you can go back and, uh, and customize everything. If I want the profile picture to have like a, like a glow, for example, boom, I can easily do that. Now it's part of the whole thing, right? <laughs> if you're doing this, pick a better font, <laughs> make sure it's legible, but I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Stop the interview. As fun as this was, uh, it was really time consuming. I just wanted to show you that, hey, this is possible to do an OBS if you want to. This is not a project that I want to put like extra effort into. So I'm probably going to leave it at that. I'll post the card, the follow card if you want to. But if you want more, I encourage you just make your own. I've been at this for two hours and 10 minutes. <laughs> I don't know if it's worth it. I don't know if it's worth it, but I love the fact that with OBS Studio, now we can have 3D information within an animation, right? The card, this whole card system is not something new to me because I did want to create an animation in a 3D software, but my only problem was how am I gonna make the profile picture or you know the follower's name to stick to the card? And I abandoned that project because of that. Now you know that it's possible. And since I also made a video where I showed the holographic effect on a flat card in OBS Studio, you can also apply it to this. Either way, this is going to be a nightmare to edit. But if this is your cup of tea, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, share with your streamer friends, and I'll see you next time. Go out there, make me proud, get level, out. <laughs>